Hello, my name's The Wandering Dutch, and welcome to the Community Indie Showcase Extra. And today, I'm interviewing the awesome It's Average Joe from Button Factory Games, the solo dev behind Edge of Algoria, which you will have seen on the showcase just before. Welcome, Joe. It's great to have you on and uh, learn a little bit more about Edge of Algoria. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. No, oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, so as we saw on the showcase as well, uh, an awesome trailer for your solo project, the Edge of Allegoria. Um, before we get into learning more about the game in itself, let's learn more about the man behind it. So <laughs> if you could just kind of let us know how you got into uh, being a solo dev in the first place, what kind of enticed you to go down that route? Because it's not an easy task. No, it's definitely not. I learned that one the hard way. Um, <laughs> um, I, I've actually, I've been developing games since I was probably like 14, 15. I found Game Maker. Um, I, I used to do, uh, I used to watch a lot of uh, those like stick figure flash animations on yeah. like Newgrounds and E-Bombs World and all that. Um, Showing our age now. Showing our age. <laughs> Newgrounds. Yeah. Uh, Exactly. Um, and I, I I wanted to get into doing animations, So, yeah. uh, but I didn't have Flash. So I was looking for a free program online I could learn how to do animations on. Um, and Game Maker, uh, surprisingly, it was like, well, hey, I can make games too. And it also has that animation side of it. So that was sort of how I started getting into it. Um, and then I just kept making games over and over again until um, just like little projects. I'd spend a weekend working on it or something like that. Um, and then just abandon it because, you know, that's, that's what you do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, and then, but then like uh, later on, I think it was like in the middle of the pandemic, I decided, you know what, I'm, I'm going to try to pursue this as something that, you know, I could maybe make a living off of one day. Um, and I was actually working with uh, a guy at my, my old day job, um, on a game before. Um, and I found that the the motivation wasn't lining up the um the same we didn't have necessarily the same passion same dedication to the project um as we were working on it together so that ended up getting abandoned uh, as well a lot like my other old projects um but i still had the the drive to complete a game and and release it um so that was kind of what prompted the whole solo developer path was just uh, i I couldn't find anybody else to work with that really had the same energy as I did to get this thing done. Yeah. So what? So of course, the Edge of Allegoria is um, a retro RPG inspired. What I, well, essentially looked like to me was just an old, a good old fashioned Game Boy game. Uh, what? Yeah. What kind of brought that? What inspired you to that? Then what is it? Any specific games that inspired that specific style and and going for that? Because it is. It stands out in modern times, put it that way. Well, there's there's definitely there's definitely a certain uh, a certain monster catching franchise <laughs> that has contributed a lot of inspiration. Yeah. Um. Uh, that being said, um, it, it, there's there's a lot of inspiration from other games as well. I'm I'm a huge RPG fan. My reflexes are definitely not where they used to be. Um, so having a turn-based game is definitely something that I really enjoy. Um, so that's that's kind of what I, I've always wanted to make an RPG too. Um, like I, I used to make platformers and like little like sort of like Legend of Zelda, like Link's Awakening kind of things. Um, and they, I, I found they were they were fairly easy for me to kind of just throw together, and it didn't give me enough of a challenge. Um, but RPGs were something that I never really touched on. I uh, never really tried, so I, I really wanted to get into making an RPG, yeah. and I figured that the easiest way to to do that would be to go back to when uh, RPGs were, you know, simpler, uh, and what simpler time than uh, back in the Game Boy days. Um, also, being a solo dev, uh, it, it kind of trying to limit myself to the more simple stuff is a good way to help me get things finished if i if i overcomplicate it then i'm definitely not going to get it done um and also uh i'm i'm colorblind so uh only having the four colors uh has really helped yeah uh to you know make sure that i i can keep a consistent style because i i mess up reds and greens all the time uh, I have the same as me then 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, it's actually, it's fascinating. Ever since I started uh, doing this uh, and talking about being colorblind, making a game, I've met so many other people that <laughs> also uh, are colorblind. Uh, so it's, it's, it's super cool. Um, and that's and that's part of why um, it looks the way it does is because I only have four colors to choose from. I can't really go wrong. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm when I'm drawing something, right? Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Yeah. So I mean, the the one thing that stood out, of course, as well, was it wasn't just that against that monster catching franchise that it looks like, but you've you've took a more adult spin to it. It's definitely not for kids. Mm, definitely not. No. <laughs> definitely not, not at for all. kids. <laughs> Um, but it's definitely it is unique in its own right. Is other than that franchise, it is more a, from what I can tell anyway, just that single character as you're leveling mm -hmm. up, going off against in the world and and doing this RPG. So, what inspired just in, instead of having potentially a party like a lot of older traditional turn-based mm -hmm. RPGs did, to just having a a solo character as as your main focus? Well, that 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 kind of came from uh, I, i'm not i'm not ashamed to admit it it came from my own in, inexperience um having only one character to worry about is a lot less code for me to write yeah <laughs> so that that kind of that kind of was the main driver for it um but uh, i also i've been playing like i played a lot of elden ring i play a lot of games where you only play as one character you create your character at the beginning uh, and that's just who you are for the game um, and I wanted to kind of take that and put it into the same sort of uh, like the team based RPGs um, and kind of see what I could do with just having a single character. Also, everybody who's played like a Pokemon game um, as a kid, at least your starter Pokemon is always like way over level. Yeah. You're basically playing the game with one Pokemon anyways. Yeah. So um, it's sort of like going back to like at least when I was a kid, like I, I had uh, Pokemon Yellow uh, and my Pikachu was like level 100 before I reached the final gym because it's like, it's all I used. So it's sort of going back to the way that I used to play a, a lot of the old games as well. Awesome, awesome stuff. Um, yeah, and a lot of people might not know because obviously the trailer doesn't really go into that. More shows you a little bit more of the gameplay, but what is the story behind Edge of Allegoria? Um, so the story of Edge of Allegory is kind of, it, it it spans the entirety of the game and it kind of reveals itself as you progress through it. Um, so I can't really go into too much detail. Yeah. Um, but essentially, um, a, a long, long time ago in the world of Allegoria, um, these, these deities came from wherever deities come from. Uh, they came down, they created the world. Um, there's seven of them. Uh, they created like the, the mountains, the trees, water, everything like that. Uh, and then there was the seventh star, as he's called in the game, who created all of the life in Allegoria. And basically uh, what he did, he create, he kept creating. Their whole purpose was to create and continue on forever and ever and ever. Um, and his sisters found out, or th they didn't find out, sorry. Uh, his sisters, they... Um, they stopped. They felt like they were done. They were like, oh, this is this is a paradise. Everything's in perfect balance. And he was like, no, you have to, our purpose is to keep creating. We were sent here to create this world. We keep going. So he kept creating these monsters and he got pissed off at his sisters saying like, you guys, you're, you're betraying your duty. Uh, and so he's going to take matters into his own hands and he creates these dragons uh, and they reshape the land. They, he, sends his sisters away they get they they run and hide um and he basically takes over the entire world um and changes it to suit his needs for his creations um and then flash forward years and years later everything's kind of fine um you know all the excitement's died down uh there's nothing you know there's no dragons coming and killing everybody all, all the time uh there's kind of been a, a balance that has come about again uh it's not perfect but it's you know it's life and people are just kind of doing their own thing um so you start in the game you play as just this random guy who's decided you know i've i've had enough of how things have been i'm gonna go out and just see 
where the wind takes me, basically. Um, and as you go, you get swept up into this story of these deities uh, and the dragons and finding out about all of these um, anomalies who have popped up over the centuries uh, of Allegoria. And you discover kind of your place in this world. Um, and as you go, you, it, it's not really, it, it's more of a collection of short stories um, with an overarching narrative. It's not really a very in your face kind of thing. It's very, you get bits and pieces here and there as you, as you go and kind of just uncover what mysteries uh, and the history of the world uh, and how everything that's transpired. Nice, nice. That, that kind of slightly reminds me of, uh, of um, a game, a much larger Square Enix game called, called um, Octopath Traveler, in mm, that mm -hmm. it has an overarching story, but because you have so many characters in the game, you have all these bite-sized mm -hmm. stories in between as well. And that's actually really intriguing that it is more a collection of bite-sized stories and an overarching story than it is just a singular story like you find with Pokemon, mm. where it's just the elite and then the gyms. Exactly. That's it. <laughs> or Team the, Rocket. The way that I the the way that I I look at it is um, this is this is very much uh, a game to be played uh, on a handheld device. Um, like a hundred percent. If you've got a Steam Deck, this is that's the way to play. Um, fingers crossed that I can get it on the Nintendo Switch one day. I'm working on it. I'm trying. Um, but as of right now, uh, the Steam Deck is 100% the way to play. And the best, like, I I would be playing the Steam Deck on, if I, if I wasn't locked in my basement working on this game all the time and I had to go somewhere, <laughs> yeah, I'd be playing it on, on the bus, um, you know, going into work. Um, or just, it's the, the different sections of the story are, uh, I'm trying to design them in a way that you can play them on a commute and complete them like a, as you go about your day or like on a lunch break or something. Um, it's one of those, like you, you get these bite-sized parts so that you can digest it in pieces and then take the story with you wherever you go. Um, Cause I, I mean, that's how you, I, I used to play on the Game Boy as well. Yeah. Um, it's like, you've, you've got your, you save your game, you take your Game Boy, you go somewhere else and you play your five minutes, 10 minutes here and there, wherever you can. Um, and that was kind of the way that I wanted to approach the, the game's design is to have smaller, more digestible chunks um, that you can play in, in, at your own pace, basically. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, I used to, and I don't know how you used to play it, but I used to try and over-level myself immediately in the old RPGs. I used to go out and then just run around in the grass for, like, hours <laughs> over-leveling. And I, I've actually, uh, that, that was something that I have been as development has been progressing, I've been watching people streaming. I've been playing it a lot myself um, and, but watching other people play as well. Um, the over leveling is something that a lot of RPGs kind of almost encourage you to do um, the way that they kind of, they set the bosses at a certain level and then you have, you almost have to grind to yeah. be able to beat them. Uh, and the way that I'm, uh, I've, I've actually just recently implemented it um it, I, there's a dynamic level scaling um so you can't do that nice um, it, it provides a challenge no matter where you are when you first enter an area it'll lock in your level so you can grind for that area if you need to uh but once you leave that area and go to the next one it's going to reset that new level threshold so it's going to get the challenge is going to come right back up um so it kind of it it encourages you to just kind of keep your momentum going and figure out the battle mechanics and strategize more of how you can use the skills that you learn um, more effectively in battle. Um, because eventually you get to a point where you can be taken on bosses 5, 10, 15 levels higher than you, no problem, um, if you strategize properly. Nice, nice. That's very intriguing. So. In terms of, because the only thing that you, one thing you didn't have in those Pokemon, for instance, is things like armor or weapons. You learned some mm. moves, etc. Is armor and or weapons a part of Edge of Allegoria? Very much so, yes. Um, the, I've taken inspiration from uh, Final Fantasy Tactics uh, with the weapon and armor. Um, in those, I played Final Fantasy Tactics Advanced religiously as a child. It was, it was one of my <laughs> favorite games ever um and uh the one thing that stuck with me and i always wanted to include in the game 
was having skills attached to your weapons. Yes. Uh, and as you use the weapons, you master them, and then it allows you to use that skill without the weapon equipped. Um, so I've taken that and I've put it right in, and every single weapon in the game, that's how you learn battle skills, uh, things that you'll use uh, in your fights, is you collect weapons, you master them, you use them in battle to master them, and you learn the skill, and then it allows you to craft a move set that you bring with you into future battles. Um, also, uh, the stat boosts that each weapon provides, once you master it, get absorbed into your character's base stats, so you get exponentially stronger. The more weapons you master, the stronger you'll get, and uh, the faster you'll be able to get stronger. Uh, and equipment works the same way. Uh, it doesn't come with a battle skill, but every time you get hit with an attack, it increases the mastery of your uh, your like armor or clothing or whatever, um, and it allows your defensive stats to increase. So you basically, the instead of collecting monsters in this game, you're collecting uh, armor and weapons, and you want to find and, and master as much as possible. Nice, nice. That's awesome to hear. It's awesome to hear. I want to say a, a, a big congratulations as well, because not long ago, you also managed to smash through your Kickstarter. Um, I did, yes. Thank yeah, you. it was great to see, great to see. And is, is that something that you, you'd always planned, or did it get to a certain stage in development of, okay, I'd, we're getting to a certain stage now where I'm trying to continue doing this. It's getting a little bit more difficult without funding coming in. A Kickstarter yeah. would really push things along to get this game completed. Yeah, I, I had I had planned on a Kickstarter. I was hoping that maybe a publisher would reach out to me and you know offer me some some sweet deal, um, but that didn't happen. Um, and so I was like, hey, I got to take matters into my own hands um, because I I was working on this part time for. Uh, about two ye almost two years, um, uh, I, I had a day job, uh, and then restructuring happened, and I got laid off. So I was like, "Well, uh, I guess this is what I'm doing now. I yeah. just have to <laughs> jump in full time." Um, and I've been sort of living off of savings uh, for the past year now, uh, and that started running out. So like, I got I got no choice. I have to do a Kickstarter or else I won't be able to continue doing this at all. Yeah. Uh, I sort of came out of, like I, I had hoped to do it to maybe fund a little extra, um, but it became, I had to, I had to do it to be able to continue to you know eat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So yeah. But thankfully, like uh, I'm super grateful for everyone that backed the campaign because it, 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 I I am I am able to continue doing this now, and it, uh, I'm like eternally grateful to everybody who helped me reach the goal. Nice. Is there any stretch goals in mind? Have you got anything like that planned? Um, I there we did reach one stretch goal. Um, I was a little I was a little over ambitious with my stretch goals. Um, I I, I will admit it, <laughs> I I I was uh, very very optimistic, a lot more optimistic. My wife told me I was being greedy, um, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we did reach one stretch goal. Uh, we did unlock uh, hardcore mode. Um, so uh, there is, there will be a mode in the final version where if you die, you're done. That's it. Your your save file is is toast. Uh, you're back at the beginning. You you just you you can't die. And I've been doing a lot of playtesting, and that's a re like that's a really hardcore hardcore <laughs> mode because I die all the time, and I'm the guy who made the game. So. <laughs> If I'm dying all the time, it's really, really hard. Yeah. No, that's awesome. It's awesome to hear. So are there, do you have other stretch goals still up? Can people still support by backing the Kickstarter? or? Um, the Kickstarter's done. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was the 30 days. Uh, however, if there is anybody that does want to, um, you can still get in and get um, some backer rewards. Um, I've had a few people reach out to put their pet into the game. Um, because that's that's another feature we didn't talk about that um at the beginning of the game you can choose your own name like in most rpgs um, but you also get a companion that comes along with you you can choose a dog it was originally just a dog that you yeah. could name um but because of the kickstarter campaign we also have uh, a few dogs a few cats and a rat that you can choose okay. from um, to bring along with you on your adventure and your dog uh, or your cat your, your pet that you bring with you um, will uh, works as your fast travel system, uh, and will also save you uh, if you die in battle. It'll drag you back to the last town you were in, um, 
so that you uh, you can get away safely and not die. Uh, obviously, in the hardcore mode, the pet doesn't come yeah. to save you at all. You're just dead. But uh, I've just got images of a mode, cat trying to drag a human body back to it. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was thinking of actually just making the cat like you could only choose cats for the hardcore mode because cats will just walk up to you and be like, "Oh, you died. That's that sucks. Too bad." Yep. <laughs> and they just walk away. Like, "Oh, I guess I guess you're not worthy to be my owner now. I'll I'll see you later." <laughs> yeah, you just see the cat go and walk across to the enemy. Yep, this guy's good. <laughs> yeah, it's like, "Oh, you're you're my friend now." Um. Oh, but yeah. So if you do want to continue, uh, like the option is still there. If people want to continue to support the project, um, join the Discord. We I do have a Discord. You can join the Discord. Shoot me a DM, and we can work something out. I've got PayPal set up, uh, and I can get you added in as one of the backers. Um, and you know, I've got add get you added as an NPC. Um, I'm making a physical player's guide. Uh, there's a digital version of the player's guide as well. There's also a soundtrack. I get a little bit of a discount from what it would be when the game uh, releases uh, fully on Steam. Nice, nice. And of course, you can get this on Steam Wishlist now. There is a demo available on Steam. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that demo available permanently or is that going to be? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Terrific. A hundred percent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Once the, the, the I, once I release the demo, it's like it's it's out there. That's there's there's no way around it. I'm just I, w I want people to play this game as much as possible, even if it's just playing the demo. It's about an hour long. Um, I can do it the whole thing in about forty five minutes. Um, I've also watched some other people play it for about three hours. So depending on how you how you play, uh, you could you could be in for a pretty good time just with the demo uh and then the full game uh is significantly longer <laughs> that's good to hear that's good to hear and so last last few questions and do you have a rough kind of idea as to when you hope to launch this game i do um my my goal is sometime november december this year um, I, there's, there's a little window, there's, there's the Steam Next Fest that's happening, uh, in October, and then there's the Steam Winter Sale, and there's a little window in between where there's nothing going on, and I want to, I want to try and squeeze myself right in there, so I'm hoping, fingers crossed, I can get in, um, sometime mid-November, um, just before the Steam Winter Sale, so you can get your launch discount, and then another discount that'll come in. Uh, during the Steam Winter Sale. Nice, nice. And of course, you mentioned that it's on Steam, or at least going to be launching on Steam first. Have you got ambitions for any other platforms? You mentioned Switch before. Yeah. I'm, I'm really hopeful. It's always been my dream to be be able to say like I, I made a Nintendo game. I, <laughs> I, I've got my game on on a Nintendo, because um, I've been a Nintendo guy forever. Like ever since I, I started playing on the NES, yeah. and I've just been a Nintendo guy. Uh, forever um i i do hope to also release on other consoles as well um i've got uh, i just gotta figure out how to get all that stuff set up really i want to focus on getting the game finished on steam first uh and i'm looking for publishers to hopefully help me do some porting um because that would be super super helpful take a little bit of the load off of that um but hey if I if I got to do it myself, I got to do it myself. I've been doing it myself uh, this whole time, <laughs> anyways. So yeah. I'll figure it out. It's um, the, if I can, I'll try to get it released all at the same time. I'm not making any promises on that. It's very likely that a console release will come Later. probably next yeah. year sometime. Um, and uh, but yeah, like the goal is to get it onto every possible platform that I can. I mean, the, 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 the best thing about it is it seems like there's a resurgence of handhelds in the air at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks yeah, like exactly. all major platforms. I've heard some are rumors. Kind of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's, so, there, there's a certain a certain green console that, that I've, I've heard might be yeah. stepping into the handheld realm. Definitely. Be fantastic because that's that's what I've got on my TV upstairs. I've got a, I've got a Series X up there that I, I've been playing. That, that's, that's where I've been playing all my Elden Ring. <laughs> um, and it would be it would be super cool to be able to have it on my on my dashboard and have like Edge of Allegoria right next to like all the other games that I play. It would be super sweet. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. 
Yeah, it would be it would be sweet. I love to see more and more indie games getting back in, and and it's great to see a little bit more focus on that as well. Um, I know Xbox have been kind of champ trying to champion it a little bit more. They died off after mm. the uh, the uh, three sixty arcade generation, where it was very prevalent there. And then, of course, bringing it back with ID at Xbox, and now they've got Indie Spotlight on there as well. So it would be great to see that. Uh, I know PlayStation have got a little bit of work to do on that front in terms of spotlighting Indies, but fingers crossed, fingers crossed, because uh, Indies do deserve a lot more, a lot more light shone on them. And it's uh, it's great to see solo devs putting their hard-earned sweat and tears into this, because uh, that's, it is that, it is that. Well, I've I've been I've been watching the the big the big big game companies those triple A's they've been they I like I I feel like it's like a sentiment that a lot of people share uh, is that the triple A uh, developers are are dropping the ball a little bit um, and I feel like it's it's up to it's up to us indies to kind of pick up that slack and kind of you know keep games fun and keep games as games and yeah. not as like storefronts or just like places for to sell DLC. Like it's like indie games are where games are going to continue to thrive as video games as they are intended. It's, you know, something fun to do and a way to kind of escape from this world that we live in. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, like, I feel like indie games are a hundred percent the future of gaming. Oh, 100%, 100%. It is the most creative medium in, in, in gaming, without without a shadow of a doubt. Is that you find some of the most the, the most creative and most engrossing games that we've come across in recent times have all been indie games. I don't get mm-hmm. this wrong. We love our big Elden Rings and our big Triple oh, yeah. <laughs> and and things like that, but a lot of it is they're all there about similar to each other. On the indie front, mm-hmm. however, that's where people can get creative because they don't have 45 people telling them what direction it needs to be and this colour and that colour and what characters do this and that. And It's all your idea, it's all your story, it's all your thoughts and what you want to put into the game and ultimately it's, it is a reflection of your creativity. So that's the way it's and why indie games continue to be, for me, the gems of, of indies, of, of gaming in general. Yeah, I a hundred percent agree. It's the small teams. It's it's fueled by passion, uh, and it's it's just a love for the medium as as an art form. Um, and it indies are in, indies are the way. Like it's just there's you can't go wrong with an indie game. No, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's been an absolute blast. Thank you for coming along today, and I hope Thanks people for me, man. really enjoyed learning about the Edge of Allegoria. Um, Fingers crossed, coming out this November. <laughs> Hopefully. I'm working, I'm working Fingers hard. Fingers crossed. <laughs> but no, it's been an absolute <laughs> blast. Let people know where they, of course, can follow yourself, follow the development progress, because you, you stream on Twitch all the time, development updates yep. and developing the game as well as playing the game. Um, you've got a Discord yeah. there. So, yeah, let people know where they can find that. Um, well, I'm I'm it's uh, Average Joe everywhere. I've got my, where, where's my thing on the screen here <laughs> this, this one there we go my name on the screen i'm i am it's average joe everywhere i'm on uh twitter instagram threads mastodon tiktok youtube twitch you name it everywhere um and i uh, I, I do a lot i do a lot of cross posting I, I can't say i'm the most ambitious social media guy <laughs> um but pick your poison i'm on all of them uh if there's one you prefer follow me there uh, I'm I'm always posting updates, little videos or or images, stupid memes, hot takes. Uh, you know, just trying trying to spread the word. Awesome stuff, awesome stuff. And we'll have more dev interviews as well um, from uh, a few others coming up soon. So stay tuned for those, including Thomas Salah from Bulwark Falcon Your Chronicles as well. Um, but uh, yeah, again, once more, thank you, Joe, for coming over today, and uh, of course. Hope you enjoyed seeing the game trailer on the Community Indie Showcase. And if you want to go and play the demo now, it's available on Steam. So get downloading and, of course, drop a wish list because that also helps Joe significantly. So please do that. And, uh, yeah, until next time, guys. <laughs> <laughs> See you later.